Hello, and thanks for watching. In this video, we convert this dog run from native creeping flax to native carex. This is the third video in a series of grass lawn alternatives. In the second video, I shared that the seeds froze while completing seed stratification. I tried to move forward, but as you can see in a current photo, none of the seeds germinated. At some point, I will go back and repeat this process, starting with seeds, but for now, I purchased two trays of carex. The dark green tray is Carex Pennsylvanica, and the light green tray is Carex radiata. These both prefer shade and rich loamy soils with abundant organic matter. The main difference to highlight is radiata, which is taller, reaching heights of two feet, while Pennsylvanica reaches heights of up to 10 inches. So now that I have plants, I need to find a location. I decided to replace the Phlox Stolonifera Sherwood Purple which is currently used in our dog run. While our dog Sawyer gets a walk each morning and night, he still uses this area as needed, so we need the ability to keep the area clean. So this area took some time to establish and looks beautiful in April when it's in full bloom. Unfortunately, the phlox grows too tall for a dog run. Online lists heights of half an inch to 10 inches but I measured this at over one foot tall, making it difficult to find dog waste. So, per the misses, I used a weed whacker to reduce the height, which allowed the sun to reach the ground, leading to weeds germinating. Realizing we need a better solution, and I needed a shady spot for Carex, led me to this area. So, let's take a closer look at our dog run. The main area beyond the HVAC unit is approximately 8 feet wide by 22 feet long, or 175 square feet. And it is accessed via a narrow entry past our HVAC unit and through the door. Therefore, anything in or out of the area will need to be carried with these buckets. In addition to the buckets, we completed this entire project using these tools. Standard garden gloves, a round point digging shovel, a transfer shovel, a four-pronged rake, a 14-inch steel rake, a soil knife, red gorilla large tubs, and any waste was taken away using a dump trailer. Here is the first time lapse where my son helped me complete the demo. We were fortunate the creeping phlox was not too deeply rooted and there were minimal weeds. My son loosened the clumps and I was able to carry them away to the dump trailer. We did our best to use no dig practices to limit damage to the living soil. This means we only dug where needed and we did not use a rototiller. Once complete, this is what we were left with. You'll notice the stones that run along the wall due to some minor splashing that occurs from the roof. Since we are leaving the stones, I decided to leave the flocks in this spot only. Next, let's talk soil amendments real quick. I put down a thick layer of compost and a thin layer of triple shredded non-dyed bark mulch. To note, all compost and mulch is not created equal. The compost is a high quality organic compost that is made a couple miles from my house at Laurel Valley Soils. You can see it has the consistency and look of topsoil and I'll cover the benefits of this in a minute. First, let's take a look at the mulch which has many benefits as well. I'll share three quick ones. It protects the compost from washing away. It gives us a clean surface to walk on that is free of messy compost, and it will not prevent the grass from spreading. Here is a time lapse of spreading the compost, which was not angled properly. While this is playing, I'll share that poor soil is the number one reason that these projects fail. Compost can hold five times its weight in water so it will help to keep the plugs moist while they establish. As it breaks down, it will condition the soil so it can hold moisture and it will shade the ground preventing weed seeds from germinating. Here's a photo with the, comp with the compost installed. Please consider subscribing so you're notified as we post updates on this project. This brings us to the final time lapse, when I spread the mulch and plant the plugs. I spread the mulch first. I prefer to do this by hand because rakes make it impossible to apply a thin layer without disrupting the compost. I put the taller radiata grass in the back and 
closer to the house, while the shorter Pennsylvanica is planted to the right. I planted the plugs sporadically with no measuring, and depending on your budget, you could add more plugs with an extra tray, which would fill in quicker, but I am not in a hurry. So here is a photo of the completed project. Please leave a comment to let me know what you think or if you have any questions. And be sure to check out our other native plant and design videos. Thank you so much for watching.